We've got a 0.5 kilogram mass resting on a table and it's connected to two hanging masses via some pulleys and ropes as shown. Now the mass, the hanging mass, on the right hand side is bigger than the hanging mass on the left hand side and that's important because we have friction involved and we want to know which way friction is going to act. So the question is, is this thing in static equilibrium? Well, static equilibrium has two conditions. One is it doesn't rotate and two, it doesn't accelerate. So we're going to focus on the not accelerating part of it. So in other words, is the net force of this system equal to zero? That's what we want to know. So for the entire system, does it add up to zero when we include friction? So first of all, let's identify all the forces that are at play. The mass on the left has a force of gravity, which we'll call Fg1. The one in the middle, because it's a little bit of a smaller mass, this one's 0.615, this one's 0.51, will have a smaller force of gravity, pulling it straight down, which we'll call Fg2. And then the mass on the right has the biggest force of gravity, which we'll call Fg3. Now there's tensions, but remember, all along these ropes, if I call this FT1 because it's rope 1, and then there's an equal and opposite tension pulling on the center mass, FT1. Similarly with rope 2, FT2, FT2 pulling up on the mass. Ropes always pull. When we look at the entire system, all those tensions cancel anyway, so they're not going to come into play. Now we are missing a couple other forces. This mass in the middle is resting on a table, and it's not moving vertically, it's only sliding horizontally, so there must be a normal force from the squeeze of the block on the table, which is equal and opposite to Fg2. So the normal force and Fg2 are one and the same in this case. Now if you look at the system, Fg3, because the mass is bigger, is clearly larger than Fg1. So it's going to rotate, or it's the system is going to drive itself clockwise. It wants to move. If there was no friction, the whole thing would rotate clockwise. So that means our frictional force, which I'll do in blue, must be trying to keep it from sliding to the right. And we want to know if we have enough friction to prevent this thing from moving. That's what we want to focus on. So what's our condition for equilibrium? I'll go back to yellow here. Our condition for equilibrium is that all of these forces that are parallel to the motion must add up to zero. So in order for my net force to equal zero, that means the sum of all the forces have to add up to zero. And again, all I care about are forces that are parallel to the motion. So this normal force and this force of gravity in the middle, they're going to cancel each other. So all I'm left with are Fg1 and the tensions and Fg3. Those are the forces that are driving the system along with friction. Now anything that's going in the direction of the acceleration, should this thing accelerate, we'll say that's positive. So since Fg1 is opposing, we'll start there. Negative Fg1 is trying to prevent it from moving. These two tensions are equal and opposite, so I'm not even going to put them in the equation. They're going to cancel anyway. This would be a positive one because it's going with the motion. If there is motion, this one's a negative one. Same with these tensions. They're going to cancel. This Fg3 is trying to drive the system clockwise, so we're saying this one is positive. And then the only thing left is our friction. And it's opposing the motion as friction does, which is negative. So there's our system. Let's see if we can figure out what friction has to be to prevent it from moving. What's the minimum amount of friction to keep this thing from moving? All right, Fg1, negative mass times acceleration due to gravity plus Fg3 is mass times 9.8 minus force of friction, all that equals zero. And when I work this through, I get a friction force of 1.96 newtons. So that means my friction has to be at least that amount. If it's bigger than that, it won't move, because it is static friction, right? It can be bigger than that. 
So now let's work out how much friction I actually have available. Let me switch to blue again. How do I calculate my static friction force? Again, we know it's static because it's not moving. Or we don't want it to move. Static friction force. Well, it's actually an inequality because it represents the maximum amount of friction necessary to break free. So you can imagine it's equal to, but technically it's an inequality. My static friction force is my static coefficient times the normal. My static coefficient is 0 0.6. And the normal force that's acting on the one block that has friction is equal and opposite to Fg2. So it's going to be, so this little bit right here is the same as Fg2, which is mass times 9.8. And we end up getting 2.9988. Notice I'm not doing any rounding. I'm just checking out the numbers. So my static friction force reaches a maximum value before it breaks free of 2.99. Well, we haven't reached that max yet. We only need 1.96 newtons. So therefore, my friction is enough to prevent it from moving. In fact, my actual real friction force will adjust to be exactly equal to 1.96 newtons. So therefore, it is an equilibrium and we call that translational equilibrium because it's not accelerated.